So the brand new show, Euphoria, starring Zendaya, just premiered on HBO, and there is a ton that we could talk about when it comes to mental health as well as addiction. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul, where we talk about the problem, but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, what I like to do is take a look at what's going on in movies, TV shows, pop culture, the YouTube community, and try to see what lessons we can learn from them. But I'm also extremely passionate about mental health as well as addiction recovery. So if you're into any of that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. And if you didn't get the memo, make sure you're following me over on Instagram and Twitter, at The Rewired Soul, because my brand new book, Rewired your anxiety is coming out very very soon and i'm giving away a bunch of free copies so follow me over on instagram at the rewired soul and on twitter all right so let's talk about euphoria so whenever a show comes out that's depicting mental illness or addiction i'm always looking to it to be like okay how accurate is this all right like is this stigmatizing mental illness is it stigmatizing addiction or is it fairly accurate right because one thing that a lot of people are looking for is like things that they can relate to. So this show Euphoria with Zendaya has been extremely hyped, all right? Maybe it's just hyped to me because my beautiful girlfriend Tristan and I, we watch a lot of HBO and we keep seeing the previews for it. But yeah, like for right now, like episode one has premiered and I highly, highly, highly recommend it. Check it out, all right? But there's a few things that were accurate, some things that weren't so accurate. So there will be some spoilers if you haven't watched episode one yet. So if you want, go check that out come back to this video. So I might do more videos in the future, like maybe following the, the first season. Um, this kind of reminds me of 13 Reasons Why, so there is an opportunity to do different character breakdowns. So if that's something that you'd like me to do, like let me know down in the comments below. Um, but anyways, I wanna focus on Zendaya's character, whose name is Rue, all right? And I might use Rue and Zendaya interchangeably throughout this video. So anyways, she is the main character of the show euphoria and basically the way the show starts out is that she was experiencing symptoms of OCD as well as anxiety as a child she talks a lot about panic attacks and things like that so one of the things is is that when she's getting first diagnosed like they're throwing like a million diagnoses at her okay so like I was just talking to Tristan about it. I'm like okay so what was her exact diagnoses all right so it seems like the two primary ones are obsessive compulsive disorder as well as some kind of anxiety disorder but OCD there's a lot of you know anxiety symptoms that go along with it as well but the doctor is like they're saying oh my be bipolar it might be this and da, da 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 and they like medicate the hell out of this young girl and this is something that is quite common right like when a child starts acting just kind of different or weird or whatever it is sometimes and there's a huge issue we have in the united states we over medicate the hell out of them and sometimes the diagnosis isn't even correct at that age. So typically, like, you need to follow a case as a child gets older to see what the actual symptoms are. But anyways, the over-medication is, like, a main theme that kind of, it kind of turns into why she ends up becoming addicted and things like that. So what we see later on is Rue, um, played by Zendaya, ends up stop taking her medications, all right? And this is something that a lot of people do. And... I actually have a whole chapter on medications and rewire your anxiety. And here's the thing, like, it is important to talk to your doctor and everything like that and try to A, minimize your medications if at all possible, but B, like, sometimes certain medications we just have bad reactions to and they might make you feel numb, they might make you feel like a zombie, they, they might do all sorts of things, like there's all sorts of side effects that these medications can have, but rather than like just not taking them, like make sure you're talking to your doctor. Now, if you're a teenager watching this, and I would love to know from you in the comments below like what demographic is actually watching this show, so if you're watching this show, and you're cool with it, let me know how old you are down in the comments below because this is like a show about teenagers, but there's a lot of adult content in it. But anyways, if you're a teenager, don't do this. Keep taking your medications because what ends up happening is Rue ends up stop taking her medications, but she's still having her symptoms, all right? Her, her symptoms of OCD and anxiety, panic attacks and everything like that, that's when she finds drugs, okay? And this is very, very, very common, okay? Self-medicating mental illness. The two leading causes of addiction are untreated or undiagnosed 
mental illness. And those of you who are just now meeting me, hi, I'm Chris, I'm a drug addict and alcoholic, and pretty soon I'm celebrating seven years sober, actually in less than a week, all right? And this, like I can really relate to this show because around high school, that's when my symptoms of anxiety and depression really started to hit hard. And that's when I started to self-medicate with alcohol because it's it's the only thing that kind of quieted my mind. So unlike uh, the character Rue from this show, like I didn't have like a doctor or anything like that prescribe me any medication. So the only quote unquote medication I found were substances. So anyways, Rue ends up, um, we find out that she overdosed and her sister finds her and like, that was a pretty powerful scene when they kind of like remembered that because it's, it's really common. Like when we're in our active addiction, we're not thinking about how it's affecting everybody else, you know? So after Rue overdoses, she ends up going to rehab. And, and yeah, so as soon as she gets out, this is something that I saw quite a few times, not only um, while I was working at a drug and alcohol rehab, but I've also seen it in my addiction recovery. So when Rue gets out, like she's talking, well, she's narrating the show and she's talking about how she has no plans of staying sober. And like, woo -hoo -hoo, I can relate to that because when I first got sober, like I was forced into it, like many people are, and I had no plans on staying sober no plans i was just gonna i was just gonna stay clean for a little while kind of let the heat die down you know that was just gonna go back to what i was doing you know what i mean and thank god like i learned that i didn't have to live that way anymore and that life could be better without substances but in the show it doesn't look like rue figured that out because as soon as she got out she was seeking drugs again. So one thing I want to talk about is there's a scene where like, she's like joking around like with uh, <laughs> one of her dealers or something like that. She's like, oh, I went to rehab and you know, I turned my will and my uh, life over to Jesus Christ, my Lord and savior and everything. So what Zendaya is refer referring to in that scene is the third step and 12 step programs. And that's not what it is, okay? Something that I have to teach a lot of people, like when I was working in the treatment center and people who are newly sober, is 12 step programs are spiritual, not religious. If you're not down with religion, don't worry, all right? It is about finding spirituality. And there are plenty of people. Um, a great book, by the way, is uh, Waking Up by Sam Harris. And it's about finding spirituality even if you're an atheist. So like, I just wanna to touch on that because there's a lot of shows out there that don't depict 12 step programs in the right light. So I just wanna jump in there and clear some things up real quick, all right? But anyways, not long after that, there's a scene where uh, Rue and her mother get into a fight, right? After she gets home, after she got high and everything like that, and her mom wants to randomly drug test her. So by the way, if you're a parent watching this, Randomly drug test your kids if you're suspicious of it, okay? Like, a lot of parents are like, well, well, I want them to know that I like trust them and everything like that. Like, listen, most teenagers already think their parents don't trust them, okay? So if you're suspicious, feel free to drug test them. And it's a great deterrent too, because when teens are out partying or with their friends and they offer them drugs or whatever, your teen has a good out to not use drugs because they're like, oh, sorry, my parents drug test me randomly. You know what I mean? That way it's like, they're not like looking like a little punk. You know what I'm saying? But anyways, like uh, Rue is very upset about her mom like not trusting her. So two things here. One of them is, this is very, very common with addict behavior, all right? Addicts, when we know we're guilty, we get overly defensive, okay? Like we're like, I can't believe, I can't believe you would even ask me that. And like you see with Rue, she was high and she ends up going getting her, her friend's pee. But anyways, this is something I always teach people new in recovery as well. Like a lot of people, they just get clean, they just get sober and they're wondering why nobody trusts them, right? And like, let's use uh, Zendaya uh, or Rue, if you will, as an example, like, before she went to treatment, her little sister found her overdosed, right? Covered in vomit, okay? And then she gets all defensive later on about, why don't you trust me? Something that I had to learn because it's something I got very defensive about as well, was like, I gave people reasons not to trust me. And it was going to take a while to earn that trust back. One of the scenes that I thought was pretty funny, I'm like, by the way, like if you're wondering if you're a drug addict, like this scene, like will teach you if you're a drug addict. And it's this, when when Rue was sitting outside with her dealer and her dealer's like, 
oh, you know, like, it seems like you're using a lot and, you know, what's going on with you or whatever. And, like, that's something, like, that kind of, like, hit me after I got sober when I was looking back at it. Like, when you're a drug addict and your drug addict friends are saying that you have a problem, like, there might be an issue, right? Like, if you're hanging out with a bunch of people who do drugs, or even if they drink, and they're noticing that you do a lot more than them, like, there's an issue. And this is something that I dealt with. Like, when I got into cocaine, and like, we would go to bars and, like, go, you know, snort some lines in the bathroom or whatever, like, I was always doing way more than everybody else, you know? And people were like, Chris, you kind of do a lot of drugs, all right? So, if your drug addict friends think that you have a problem, you might have a problem. And the last scene I want to talk about is is right there. It's in that same scene where she's talking to her drug addict buddy who's a dealer as well. And she talks about her first panic attack and she thought it, thought that she was dying and her parents took her to um, the hospital and they gave her liquid Valium. And like the way she describes that, like when I share my story about the first time I got drunk, like like this is what happens to so many of us, all right? Especially if addiction runs in our family, like sometimes we are hooked from the get-go. So she talks about how they gave her liquid Valium and everything just got quiet. And she was like, ah, like this sense of relief and that's what she was looking for. And like, that's when we know we're hooked, right? Because that's what happened to me the first time I got drunk. Like I had this noisy brain for most of my life and the first time I got drunk, I found this relief Right? I found this relief through alcohol, which later turned into drugs. And my whole life just turned into this, this whole, you know, trying to quiet my brain and everything. But the problem with self-medicating with substances is the substances start becoming the primary source of all of your problems, all right? So now that I've been sober for almost seven years, like I still have a noisy brain. I still have my generalized anxiety disorder, but I can no longer turn to mind altering substances to quiet that down, which is one of the reasons why I'm writing the book, Rewire Your Anxiety, because I've had to develop a ton of different coping skills on how to manage my anxiety without turning to substances, all right? And like, this is, this is huge because even, even though I'm on an anti-anxiety medication, it only does so much. So I had to learn other ways to manage my anxiety, all right? But anyways, anyways, Euphoria right now, two thumbs up. Go check it out. If you've watched the first episode, let me know your thoughts about it down in the comments below, okay? And like I said, if you're into the show, if you want me to do more episode breakdowns or like character breakdowns, like just let me know down in the comments below. Like I'm here for you, baby, all right? So anyways, that's all I got for this video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to become a patron and a one of the tiers, you get all of my books for free and future books. So become a patron, click or tap right there. All right, thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.